Glomley of Peel and Whittle Waters uh, their report in stark contrast to the remarks and statements of some of their colleagues. Does she therefore agree with Peel Holdings when they told the leader of the council that your actions do nothing to encourage much needed outside investment into Birkenhead and put potential funding from public and private sectors in jeopardy? Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Andrew Davis. Okay, thank you for your question. No, we absolutely, um, you know, dispute that. We um, feel that Peel should have come up to the plate a lot sooner and that they certainly need to provide more evidence. It's really positive in terms of um, the work we've been able to do with them on the World Wars of One project where we will be delivering um, 500 um, properties and homes for people. Um, it's going to be a real, you know, provider it goes through plan, okay, it's going to be a real catalyst um, for that area there and to develop a whole new um, community. Um, so, you know, we are, we are working with Peel, but we all need to carry on working um, really, really hard together. Councillor Mary Jordan. Thank you, Mr Mayor. My question is for the leader of the council. I share his delight that Will is going to be the borough of culture next year. Will he join me in supporting the Will Festival of Music, Speech and Drama? which celebrates its 70th anniversary next year. This is an organisation that supports children and young people to flourish in all aspects of the arts. Councillor Bill Davis. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Andrew Hodson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a question from the Leader of the Council, Philippe Davis. Uh, can I begin by congratulating uh, at Cabinet on the 18th of December, the leader advised the story homes had substantial expansion strategy, which is one of the reasons for partnering with them on the Hoyle Golf Resort. As story homes have now withdrawn from that deal, is the leader aware how unpopular red room homes are in Merseyside, not least from their desire to build houses on Coldstones Park in Liverpool? Councillor Phil Davis. As Ms. Maris, uh, Councillor Hudson knows, we are at the, still at the early stages of this project. Uh, we're, looking, we're doing a series of feasibility, feasible, the developer is doing a series of feasibility studies. Uh, there'll be a detailed report to um, Cabinet uh, at the end of this year, beginning of next year, when all the um, uh, feasibility studies, the results will be uh, shared. And the, the next stage is to look at the funding financial package and the house building element, the uh, golf course element, the uh, hotel, etc., the, uh, the, the Lynx Academy will all be part of that. And um, uh, the, the benefits, uh, which I believe potentially substantial to uh, jobs and investment in the speak. So the important thing is that we, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't produce a knee-jerk reaction to this project. We look at the evidence and we look at what the uh, project's about. I, I, I do personally believe Celtic Manor are a world-class brand, but we need to see what the whole package looks like rather than jumping to uh, conclusions and headlines, which may uh, go down well in the Conservative newsletter and the Conservative Party, but actually don't take this debate. Well, well, on green green belt belt Thank you, Mr. I didn't answer the question. Oh, yeah. Cox. Thank you, Mr. It's a question to um, Angela Davis, the cabinet member for jobs and growth. It's on that particular topic, something that is dear to the uh, residents of my ward, where they can melt. Yeah, at a public meeting arranged by the MD for Will West, the leader of the council pledged to look at alternatives to the golf resort proposal. A, freedom of, uh, a recent freedom of information request has revealed that no studies has have yet been undertaken on the specific alternative proposal of the wetlands resort. Will the cabinet member be commissioning such a study, or was the leader wrong to say this? Councillor Andrew. In answer to your question, I believe that um, this is something that has been explored. Oh, 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 oh,
Councillor Joe Bird. You're not answering the questions. Councillor Eric Gleeson, Finance and Income Generation. Would she agree with you that we must support access to local centres like New Ferry and Bromborough Village through car parking and better bus services? Because locally owned businesses, traders and customers, they're the heart and soul of our local economies and local communities. Unlike businesses that are run for purely wealth extraction. So please could you give council an update on the community wealth building initiative? Councillor Janet Robinson. Thanks for that question, Joe. Yeah, we'll answer that. Um, Sorry, Jeff. I'm speaking at the minute, so that means you don't. I'm sorry, I thought you were going to like to do it with an answer. I agree. All right, then. Thank you for recognising the value of our community wealth building strategy. You are right that um, at the moment things are being worked particularly well for residents on rural, particularly in the more deprived areas where the multinationals are just sucking wealth out of those communities. Um, we have got Neil McEnroy from CLES, which is the Centre for Local Economic Studies, working with Rural Council to advance our community wealth building strategy. Um, He's here soon, he's, he's working on um, the percentage spend that Rural has and our partners have as well. And we're, we're working on increasing that so we can keep more of the Rural part here on Rural. Very much important for um, laws like Rural Joe, New Ferry, for this part and for other areas that we're hoping to build up. And how a new approach to that regeneration, so thank you for that. Councillor Pat Cleary. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have a question for Angela Davis, please. Um, Angela, in light of the IPCC report last week demanding unprecedented and urgent change to avert climate breakdown, what efforts are being made to ensure that the new Eureka facility <coughs> will incorporate smart technology and renewable energy systems to ensure that it is at least a carbon neutral facility and ideally carbon negative? Thank you. Catch Angela Davis. I mean, it is really exciting, um, you know, the work that, that has been done. Um, I've, I've been up to um, visit um, the Eureka Children's Museum in um, Halifax, and I don't know if, if, if you've been, if you've been part or anybody else has been, but it's really quite, quite an amazing place. Um, you will see, you know, the level of detail that goes into um, the work there, um, and you know, I, I, I know that um, looking at um, uh, science, technology, environmental things is right at the forefront of what they are doing. Um, but I will make sure in my um, you know, dealings with them that, that they have taken that into consideration. Council Les Rowlands. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This is a question to the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth. The Cabinet Member in their report advises that work should continue with the Riddle Growth Company can she tell me when the temporary post of programme manager for the growth company, which has already been extended six times and has a total cost so far of £369,000, will end? Councillor Andrew Davis. Um, thank you, thank you for your question. Um, so in 2011, Rural Council employed 5,010 full time staff. Today, after eight years of unrelenting Tory austerity, that mm. figure is 3,252. So that is, um, the workforce is reduced by 35%. That's 1,758 people in total. So clearly that means that there is a, a, you know, a hugely reduced capacity within the organisation to deliver any projects or work programmes outside of the day-to-day -day business of the council. Um, you know, we just, we don't have enough staff anymore and we barely have enough to, to run the day-to-day -day services which our, our residents rely on. So when we have a short-term, clearly defined piece of work to deliver which requires specialist skills, it's often not a sensible use of public money to recruit permanent, often highly paid and skilled employees to deliver it. And rural growth company is a perfect example in point. Creating this company um, is a very, very specialist 
um, area and, and, and require skills, which we don't need permanently. But these skills are expensive to bring in, even for, for the short term. And obviously, with the revenue support grant going, um, you know, the situation's only, only going to get, get worse. So, we have to find new ways to bring in income into the council to replace the money that, that, that the government's taken away from us. And this is exactly what the growth company is going to do. Um, so, in terms of, you know, the particular staff that, um, that we are using at the moment, we will use them as long as it's needed. Um, you know, the World Growth Company is a really good news story and it's going to deliver large-scale regeneration. It's going to um, mean a lot of employment for people. It's going to be apprenticeships for people and we've got a higher local, bi-local scheme as well. So we will carry on using the right people for as long as we need. So that was the fifth question to Councillor Angela Davis. Councillor Jerry Ellis. Obviously, we want to spend money on sports as people want to play. But are you aware of the fact that in the last 10 years, some 27% decrease in the number of people playing golf? That's a very big decrease, Bill. And also, are you aware, you will be aware, obviously, that um, Mac Golf, has just gone into liquidity voluntary liquidation. It's shut out eight golf courses nationally, uh, including Barry Park in Liverpool, and now it's a fourth golf course. So do you therefore believe that it's right to be spending money on sports that people are on declining? And would you go to Kelly colleagues in the cameras and recommend to them to drop the idea of the Oh, sorry, it's a listen. Do you agree that we should go to, you should go to the cabinet and recommend to them that they grow, drop the toilet golf resort before any more money is wasted on it? Yes. Yeah. I'm justified. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, it's a really good point that oh. golf nationally has been on the decline. But actually, it remains quite popular in the world and it's attracting them with very large events. Because it's of our I think it's entirely right that we should continue to invest in that provision, but it's got to be done in a new and fresh way to ensure that we remain top of the game and we continue, continue to attract investment. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. No, the private, you mean. Councillor Stuart Kelly. You said you wanted to protect. No more interruptions, thank you. Yes. Councillor Stuart yes. Kelly. Uh, down question, uh, for uh, Councillor George Davis, uh, his imagery report. Councillor Davis reports that uh, uh, empty homes are being uh, teared from the housing market at a rate of 200 houses uh, per annum, 900 over his reference period. With that in mind, will he uh, undertake to revisit the assumptions that are being made in the local plan with respect to the um, projection for the contribution empty homes? Uh, uh, bringing empty houses back into use will make to that. He further reports that in respect of the selective licensing extension, there have been 42 prosecutions. Uh, I wonder whether you could break down for us in due course um, how many of those 42 were in respect of failure to obtain a license, uh, or more importantly, the second category, which, for, which was for breach of license conditions. And finally, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, I know what he says about the empty property grants being linked to a designated license, licensing area, but could he explain why that grant is not available for houses outside of the licensing area, in other words, for the wide? Councillor George Davies. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Well, Stuart, if I can uh, give you a short, I'll write back to you on the uh, 42 um, prosecutions what they were, where they've come from, and how many of them for breach. I will send them through to you uh, as quickly as possible. Um, in terms of